Thanks for having me in, Scott. Uh, you know, I'm coming to you from outside, uh, from inside my uh, virtual broadcast studio. Uh, I'm based outside Toronto, Canada. This is what I did during COVID. Uh, other people were busy figuring out Zoom. I was figuring out how to build uh, a massive uh, virtual broadcast studio. Uh, I thought I'd give you a little bit of an introduction um, to the day here to set this uh, event on artificial off, uh, intelligence off in style. So here we go. Welcome to today's show. Enterprise University is thrilled that you are here. Today's journey into the world of AI will be hosted by futurist Jim Carroll on the topic of artificial intelligence. Jim believes that the acceleration of AI is not just about the technology. It's about the promise and the peril, the opportunity and the challenge, the disruptive impact and the strategy. It's about leadership. Jim will help you understand how to cut through the hype about AI and the practical way that you might be able to take advantage of it today. He will also help you understand what he calls the AI megatrends, the deep, longer-term transformative trends that are already and will continue to reshape entire industries. We are joined today by Brianna. She's ready with a series of questions to find out how Jim might align the rapid emergence of new AI technologies to your business. Brianna, over to you. Hi, Jim. I'm Brianna. I'm going to guide you through some of the insight that you are going to share today with the folks at this wonderful Enterprise University event being held today. Is that okay? By all means, I'm ready to go. So let's talk about the agenda for today. What are you going to cover and why? I'm going to talk about what I call, you know, start out with what I call the era of acceleration. I mean, look, I've been on stage for 30 years and what I describe to audiences is that we are seeing dramatic rapid change. And I'm going to put that in perspective a little bit before I even talk about AI. Uh, then I'm going to spend a little bit of time breaking down today's AI story. How can you cut through what you're seeing in the media, in the news? Uh, we'll take a look at ChatGBT and other tools. I'm going to dare to go online live in real time. Hope it all works. Uh, and show you some of the things I'm using, certainly some of the things that you're experimenting with, and uh, you know, give you a little bit of insight into what I think uh, we can do with these tools and how we can approach them. Most importantly, I'm going to have a segment on what I call the AI megatrends, because I think it's important to understand uh, AI is not just chat GBT. It's so much bigger than that. Uh, it's been with us uh, for so long. It's having a profound impact on absolutely everything we do. Um, and, you know, we'll talk a little bit about, you know, how you might bring it into your organization, uh, give you a few action steps for, uh, for going forward. But a lot of what we're gonna cover uh, is what I call the AI megatrends uh, and what we need to do to align uh, to this dramatically faster future. Oh, I almost forgot. Before we get going, I was supposed to remind everyone to send in your questions as we go. Jim plans on stopping every five minutes or so to take some questions and do some polling of everyone here today. We know you have a lot of questions, so make sure to send them in. Yeah, Brianna, that's a good point to raise. I mean, make sure you send your questions in. Actually, I'm going to talk for about 10 minutes here at the start with the era of acceleration. Uh, but in the background, you can send in your questions. We're going to do a text message poll uh, as we go to see what you're thinking about uh, AI. But first, let's, you know, sort of set the stage for what's going on. So let's start here. I'm an AI avatar, or let's just say I'm a robot, generated by a sophisticated artificial intelligence technology system. It seems kind of appropriate, since I understand you want to start out talking about the promise and peril of artificial intelligence by telling a little story that somehow involves a rather famous robot, Rosie, from the Jetsons. And you want to set the stage for this by sharing four key observations that you have about the future. Yeah, I want to bring people into my world. I want you to understand I live in a world in which, uh, you know, change is happening faster than ever before and we need to prepare for new realities. And that's why when it comes to AI, I mean, I've been focused on this topic with a whole range of organizations. It's the topic of 2023 uh, where I'm sharing my insight with a tremendous number of different organizations, including from this virtual broadcast studio. Uh, when it comes to the acceleration of the future, the faster future, I always like to start out with a lot of key statistics. At the very first, 65% of kids who are in preschool today will work in a job or career that does not yet exist. That's an example of the fast-paced change that we find ourselves in the midst of right now. 
Uh, second observation I always like to share is if you are taking any type of degree today based on science, so agriculture, architecture, engineering, anything having to do with healthcare or technology, we're in a situation which half the knowledge that you get in your very first year of a university or college program, half of that knowledge is obsolete or revised by the time you graduate. Uh, third observation, we're in the era of what I call instant obsolescence. Think about the car today. You drive it off the uh, parking lot. Cars are essentially becoming big batteries on wheels with a lot of computer gear. Look at a Tesla. Uh, and cars are becoming obsolete faster than ever before. We live in the world of instant obsolescence where we're replacing our cell phones, our iPhones every 18 months. Uh, and the same thing is happening with all the other technology in our life. Uh, this is happening in the context of the collapse of attention spans, in that we have no attention span left. It is said if a young individual goes onto an automotive showroom where they're buying insurance, they expect to be able to go onto their mobile device and apply for that policy or buy the car, uh, get a loan and get approval in 45 seconds or less. They have no attention span. And all of these trends lead to a world in which uh, I talk about the era of acceleration. We are in a world of faster change. Change is coming at us faster than ever before. And I've always posted, uh, you know, pointed out that when it comes to the future, uh, really what matters now is the future belongs to those who are fast. And, you know, this is the type of situation where I found myself with NASA a number of years ago. They were having a leadership meeting, you know, top leadership team. They asked me to come in and talk about the future of space. And, you know, it's going to be a room full of astronauts, you know, really serious people, literally rocket engineers, people who are building spacecraft to go to the stars. And I thought, I'm going to talk about the future of space. What the heck can I talk about? And I thought I would talk about George Jetson. Why not? The Jetsons, you know, George worked at Space Lease Rockets. But what I was pointing out is this TV show, which appeared in 1962, showing the world what it looked like in the year 2062, 100 years later. All the stuff in the Jetsons is here today. They had drones, they have Apple Watches in the show, they have iPads, they have tablet devices, they have Amazon Echo, Google Home devices, they have online shopping, they have flat screen TVs. And what I was pointing out to NASA, my message for you is, we thought the future was far away. It's actually coming at us with greater speed, greater intensity. It's this era of acceleration. And you know, I'm in with NASA talking to a bunch of astronauts. Look, I, th I thought to myself, I gotta talk about Spock. I mean, I, you know, I gotta go in and talk about Spock. So I put up this picture of Spock. Spock in this episode is holding in his hands a medical tricorder, a fantastic concept from the 23rd century, a little device he could hold next to the head of a human or an alien and get an instant readout of their physiological condition. Imagine if we have medical tricorders in our life. Well, when I was with NASA, I pointed out uh, that there was something, an XPRIZE Foundation Award for what was called the, the Tricorder XPRIZE, uh, where the global scientific community was being challenged to develop the medical tricorder of the 23rd century. And a team at NASA actually developed one called the Sanadu Scout. I'm holding it here in my hands. I can hold this little device in my head and it will do a variety of physiological measurements, including doing an EKG of my heart. So we live in an era of absolute magic. The era of acceleration is upon us. Jim, that's a lot of fast change. Whoa. But what about AI? Why has it suddenly become so important and seemingly everywhere in 2023? It's found right in this chart. Look, AI has been around us for a long time and it's important to realize it's already all around you. But what has happened in the last several years is the research in it, the studies in it, the computer code around it, the community around it, uh, it has literally exponentiated. I mean, this one graph, this one chart says it all. All of a sudden, in 2020, 2021, 2022, 2023, it all came together. And it's sort of found in this you know, sort of geeky uh, observation here, where they're talking about, you know, the number of parameters in an AI model. The thing about AI, you don't need to understand how it works. You need to understand the implications and you need to understand how quickly it is evolving. So they're talking, you know, 10, 20 years ago, these models had 20, 60,000 parameters. 20 years later, chat GB2 had 110 million parameters. GBT2 went up to 1.75 billion and GBT3 had 175 billion, but they're now talking about models that are gonna have 10 trillion parameters. I mean, this is literally exponential growth. And this is why this year, it seems to be the year of all AI all the time. But how do people judge the reality of what is really going on out there with AI? I mean, there seems to be a lot of hype, but also a lot of pretty significant trends that are underway. How should people really think about it? Uh, you know, we're seeing comments such as Bill Gates, you know, the development of AI is as fundamental as the creation of the microprocessor, the personal computer is as important as the internet, the mobile phone, it will change the way that people work, learn, travel, get healthcare and communicate with each other. And this is true, it is changing our future. 
The challenge is nobody really knows how. And so I'm finding a lot of people are, you know, making the comment AI is about to change the world. The problem is no one is quite sure how. Uh, and the best way to understand what is going on, and I do this with a lot of folks I work with, is you put it in the context of what we call the Gartner hype cycle. And that is that every single new technology which comes to our world, we get the trigger, it arrives, we hit this you know, massive uh, peak of expectations where everybody's excited about it and we realize it's going to take a lot of work to make it real and have a profound impact so we all hit the trough of disillusionment. Uh, eventually we figure it out and we hit the slope of enlightenment and eventually the plateau of productivity. Every single technology has gone through this curve. You take electronic commerce, online shopping. We had the trigger, we had the massive peak of it, expectations with the dot-com years, uh, trough of disillusionment. Everybody realized, you know, this is going to take a lot of work to make it go. Uh, people lost faith in it and then COVID came along and we had the plateau of productivity. And you can take all the different elements of artificial intelligence and put them on the curve, uh, whether it's computer vision or... Uh, you know, other things, large language models, you can put them on the curve and, you know, get an understanding of where are they on the reality uh, in terms of the impact they will have and the real practical role uh, that they might play for us. So what you are trying to tell us is that AI is not one thing. It is many things. Not only that, but different aspects of AI have already been with us for quite some time, while other aspects of AI are yet to come or are still too early to have real value. Give us a little more context on that in terms of what we are hearing about in the news all the time. Well, you think about what is going on out there. You're seeing what we call the search engine wars, and that is, you know, ChatGBT versus Bing versus Google, Bard, you know, all these different models coming out. You're seeing a lot of coverage about that, and that's where a lot of the news media is. What you also are seeing is the emergence of a lot of fascinating stuff. So, for example, text-to-image generators, mid-journey. A lot of the images that I'm using in this presentation today were generated simply by giving a text command, give me a picture that related to this. So you're seeing a lot of uh, developments in that area. You're seeing a lot of software companies integrate AI into the product. Probably the best example is Photoshop, uh, where they've developed what they call generative fill, and that is you have a photo and you're basically instructing the AI, fill in the rest of the image with things that you think might work for this photo. Uh, the big ERP companies, the SAPs, the Salesforce companies of the world, the massive uh, software platforms on which a lot of Fortune 500s, Fortune 1000s build their enterprise platforms, they're integrating AI into all the many different aspects of their server technology. Uh, and then you're seeing startup world. Look, I track a site called um, top AI, top tools.com. And when I started tracking them months ago, they had a thousand tools and they had 2000 tools and they had 3000. They finally gave up and it's just more than 10,000 AI tools. And you can find tools for everything here. It's really quite fascinating if you go to this website uh, and we'll post a link to this later on and discover some of the tools that are out there where you can do really nifty things. The challenge is there's so many of these services that you can literally be overwhelmed. And I added up the math, both of them are charging, you know, five, 10, 15, $20 a month. You'd be spending $190,000 a month to subscribe to all of them. But there's a lot of startup money uh, going into AI. And then there's the AI that's already been around it. Self-driving tractors, self-driving construction equipment, autonomous vehicles. That's been a part of AI for quite some time. Uh, what we call digital twin technology, heads up display technology, fast moving technologies where we can, for example, envision a construction site using very sophisticated uh, augmented reality, virtual reality software, which is um, uh, enabled by a lot of artificial intelligence stuff. That's a part of what has been happening. There's what has been happening in the insurance world where we're using a lot of sophisticated analytical software um, to analyze policies and assess risk and determine who we're going to insure. I mean, that's been around us for quite some time. I'm actually with a uh, company in Houston, JMI Equity, in a couple of weeks. They've got 60 private software companies, and the discussion is obviously AI. And we're going to be talking about, you know, what can we do within the confines of these very specialized software platforms, which some of you might be using, uh, where we can integrate uh, some aspect of artificial intelligence to make the software more useful, more powerful, uh, solve unique customers' problems. Uh, it's everywhere. And if you want to understand what is happening is found in graphs like this. Uh, the number of projects which are underway, software projects where organizations, people are working with software, that is literally exploding in the last several years. Um, combined with the fact that the cost to do the, the processing, the, 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 the cost to do the processing of the massive sets of data used by AI, that is literally collapsing. The cost continues 
to go down that's moving it forward faster and also the amount of money coming into the world of ai there are literally buckets of money coming into artificial intelligence with investment dollars floating in all of these things mean that you're sitting around in 2023 and it seems like it's all ai all the time and it most certainly is so ai all ai all the time um let's uh, spend a few minutes for q a and again you can uh, submit your questions over in the uh, over in the chat section yeah jim so our first question comes from bruce and it's kind of foundational explain what gpt is uh gpt stands for generative pre-trained transformer i mean it's a meaningless uh, thing to you and i uh, and what I really emphasize with folks is, look, you don't have to understand how AI works uh, in order to understand what it means. You need to understand its implications. You need to understand how it's going to change your industry. You need to understand uh, the disruptive impact it will have. But you can also, you know, sort of wrap your head a little bit around, well, you know, why do these uh, engines seem so smart? And you might have read some articles that merely what ChatGPT is doing uh, is it's, really, really good at predicting what the next word will be in a sentence based upon millions and billions and trillions of parameters. Predictive text. It's figuring out if I'm going to use the word um, automotive in the context of the, the previous five words, I'm going to probably, with a high degree of accuracy, use the word industry next in the sentence. But I think people can get sort of caught up on, you know, what does it, what does it mean? Uh, and a little, you know, how does it work? And not, not really on what does it mean. Let's try and do one of these polls here. Uh, if people take out their um, cell phones, uh, send a text to 37607. Uh, and my question for you is, our understanding of the benefit risk of AI for our organization is extremely high, pretty good, need much more clarity. Um, I'm going to put this onto a full screen here. Uh, and what you do to participate is you send a text to the number 37607 to get your vote in. Uh, you punch in one of these numbers, so you would punch in 85965, and we'll, we'll get a little bit of a sense if the technology, polling technology, uh, is working here as to how people are feeling uh, about their understanding of AI. Again, send a text to 37607, and in the body of the message, punch in one of these numbers. Uh, you know, do you, you feel pretty good about it? Do you need a lot more clarity? Look, we're getting the uh, horse race happening here. Uh, we're totally in the dark. That's why you're here today. Uh, and that's what we're trying to do. And that's where I'm spending a lot of my time around the world speaking at events, trying to help people understand not what the technology, how it works, but what it means. Um, so we'll come back to this poll in a moment, 37607. Uh, we'll come back to you. I think we have had another question come in. Yeah, Jim. So uh, instant obsolescence, it's a very powerful and somewhat frightening concept. Uh, how might the audience understand the implications of this from a business perspective? Um, and how can we understand the uses of AI for success? You know, I used to uh, do a thing on stage where I talked about things from the olden days, and it was in the context of my sons who are now 28 and 30, uh, and things they saw that were a part of my life that were, to them were like, whoa, what is that? Like 35 millimeter film, CDs, DVDs, uh, TV remote controls, the TV guide. I mean, I, I emphasized we're in this world in which a whole bunch of stuff that was a part of our life is suddenly from the olden days right away. And that's happening with our phones. I mean, look, we're replacing our iPhones every 18 months. The same thing is happening with our car dashboard. Who wants to get into a car from 2018 when the technology in the dashboard, you know, looks old, obsolete, out of date, and you compare it to, you know, the dashboard of the Tesla, for example, that I have in my driveway. So cars are becoming like iPhones, iPads. You know, they're, they're going out of date faster as more technology comes in. AI is going to accelerate this trend because what we are doing is we're adding a lot of intelligence, a lot of capability, a lot of new sophisticated stuff. When we embed AI into a product, say for example, a medical device, we fundamentally change the nature of that product. Um, and you know, and that's kind of a, a very, very profound change. If we go back to the polling, uh, I think we've got some really good consistent, we need, you know, we need much more clarity. We're totally in the dark. Uh, only a couple of folks, um, you know, feeling extremely, uh, extremely high. So let's, uh, let's, let's move on. And 
uh, we're going to hopefully dive into a section where we're going to talk about chat GBT and the mega trends and provide a little bit of clarity on what is really going on out there. Got it. Got it. That helps to give AI a little more context. So I understand that you want to cover two key issues today. First, an overview of how AI tools like ChatGPT can be a powerful tool for your business. But you also want to cover what you call the AI megatrends. Why are there two topics within this Enterprise University event on AI? Isn't AI just ChatGPT? That's all we seem to be hearing about. No, I think it's critical to break it down that there's a lot more than just chat GBT. I mean, I've got, I've got uh, you know, stuff on my website where I'm talking about beyond chat GBT. It's bigger than that. Uh, what, is, what is happening is in 2022, you all remember the first time that you saw that tool and you went in and you typed, a, typed it a question that came back with this marvelous answer or the first time you saw one of these text to image video, um, text to image generators and you, you type something in stable diffusion or mid journey and it came back with a beautiful image prompt it kind of blew your mind. But the thing is to be aware that, you know, AI has been around us for five, 15, 20 years. It's already all around us. Uh, it's in a lot of the devices you're using every day. I mean, every time I drive my Tesla, uh, I'm utilizing machine vision AI. Uh, if I'm using the self-driving capability, my uh, Ecobee thermostat, uh, you know, which is used to manage the air conditioning and energy in my home. Uh, in the back end, there's some very sophisticated AI capability. So what I like to explain to folks is that, you know, there's two things which are really going on. There's what is happening with chat GBT. There's what's happening with, um, you know, the emergence of these, these fascinating new tools, but bigger than that, there's what's happening with what I call the AI megatrends. And these are sort of the big transformative trends, which have already been underway. And we're going to cover that a little bit later on uh, to really try to put that into perspective. Uh, you know, in terms of the scope of the change, which is ac actually happening. That makes sense. For sure, people need to take a long-term view of AI. After all, they might have someone like me hanging around in their life quite a bit more in the future. So let's start with ChatGPT. You've been talking about it in the context of what you call just-in-time knowledge. What do you mean by that? You know, I've been online since 1982, not a typo. I was on the internet, you know, like a good 15 years before a lot of, a lot of the uh, global population was. And what I realized early on was the emergence of all these, you know, powerful tools online. It leads us to a world that, uh, you know, instant research, the ability to get the right knowledge at the right time for the right purpose. And I call that just-in-time knowledge. That's the capability of if I've got a, a, you know, a critical issue, I've got a sales meeting or I've got a leadership meeting or I'm meeting with some customers, and there's something I don't know about it. Well, if I can develop the ability to get the right time at the right purpose, just in time to deal with that reality, well, that's a powerful capability. And I think what has happened with ChatGBT and these other tools is it's accelerated our ability to undertake just in time knowledge. Um, because I think we are discovering it can be a very, very powerful tool uh, to help us do that. Just in time knowledge. I like that. Put that into perspective with the popular media spin. Everyone seems to be saying that that AI is going to cause a whole bunch of people to lose their jobs. I'd feel kind of guilty about that. I mean, I'm a rather nice AI and I'd have a bit of a guilt trip if people lost their jobs because of me. Will people lose their jobs to AI? Uh, Brianna, I don't think you need to do a guilt trip out. I, I, you know, I, th that's the, the popular media spin is, you know, everybody's going to lose their job to an AI. You know, we're going to see massive unemployment and 40 million people are going to, you know, find themselves on the streets. I, I've never bought into that. I mean, I've got uh, images from 1930, um, popular science magazine, popular mechanics magazine, predicting the giant robot brains are going to take away all our jobs. It didn't happen back then. Uh, what what is happening is jobs are changing, careers are changing, new jobs are emerging, and uh, my 30 year old son is a drone pilot, and he's using very sophisticated hundred thousand dollar drones, uh, you know, that utilize AI in, the, AI in the back end to do some of the building uh, flight overviews that he does. I I think the way you need to think about it is you you probably won't lose your job to an AI. You could lose your job to somebody who has effectively learned how to use an AI. And that is if somebody is, you know, learning how to effectively use these tools um, to do just-in-time knowledge, to do these, uh, you know, very innovative things that I'm talking about, uh, they're going to have a leg up on you in the workforce. So I think it's implicit amongst ourselves to do everything we can to learn everything we can 
um, to ingest knowledge as to what's going on here. And that's why, you know, I think mastering chat GBT, uh, you know, this is like, you know, learning search engines back in the day. If, if we can, uh, you know, how do we effectively use chat GBT as, you know, what I would call a personal knowledge butler? How can we have it um, as a tool that can go out and help us get this knowledge at the right time? How can it enhance our skills? Um, how can we empower our workforce to use it while taking on the risk that comes with it? And we might talk a little bit about that. Uh, you know, and, and what's happening within the industry as it moves forward so quickly. Can you give us a few examples of what people can do with these remarkable tools? Yeah, let's, uh, let's, let's, let's jump in. So, uh, you know, here I am in uh, ChatGBT4. Uh, and again, this is a website. You can, you can use the free version. You can subscribe to it. Uh, you know, so I, I can, uh, you know, do a couple of things. I can, I can say to it, uh, so um, tell me a joke about a futurist. And what it does is it goes away with these trillions of parameters and, you know, thinks for a little bit and, uh, you know, comes back with a response. Why did the futurist get kicked out of the time travel convention? He arrived too early. Uh, that's kind of lame. But let's, you know, let's get a little more serious. What I've, what I've done here uh, is I have a very long uh, construction video. And they, I spoke at a construction conference last week. And there is something called um, progressive design build. And this is a, a video that is one hour and 29 minutes long. I mean, who has time in their life um, to watch a video that is one hour and 29 minutes long? Well, ChatGBT, which is one of the AI models that is out there, has this fascinating capability of what is called plugins. And plugins are sort of extra code that is added um, to ChatGBT to do things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and I'm going to set myself up, um, if I can do this right, to use a plugin that will let me uh, have it watch the video. And this is always the joy of doing um, live presentations. Um, I'm going to use what is called a video summary app. And this is some specialized computer code that someone has written that will watch the YouTube video on my behalf. So I'm gonna say, um, chat GBT, watch this video for me. Provide me a list of the 10 key things I can learn from the video and an action plan of 20 steps I could pursue. And I merely give it the URL, the link of the YouTube video, and presuming everything is working here correctly, what's going to happen? What's happening in the background right now is this AI is going off. It's, it's grabbing that YouTube video and saying, okay, here's a little summary. I'll summarize it for you because you don't have any time in your life. You're busy with a whole bunch of stuff. So it's using this video summary. And here's, you know, look at this. Here's a summary of 10 key things you can learn from the video. Uh, the importance of time management, setting clear goals, prioritization techniques. I mean, this is mind boggling stuff. It has just gone off and, and you know, looked at a um, one hour, 20 minute long video and it's absolutely summarized. So this goes to my point. If we can master the skills of, of learning how to use this for knowledge, uh, there's something powerful here. Now we need to understand that, you know, chat GBT is just one part of what's going on, but there's a lot of these plugins. So I can give you another example. We stop this one from generating and I'm going to refresh the page here uh, and do another one. So let's say you've got a long, um, you've got a long uh, thing that you need to read. And if I change the plugin here again, I have a little bit of a struggle changing the plugin. Um, there's one that um, lets us summarize a PDF. And since I, I'm not succeeding in pulling that up, there are other tools. And I'm going to lead you into this section of other tools. Here's one called chat with any PDF. So let's say I've got a, a long um, PDF document that has to do with, uh, let's say insurance. Who's got time to read uh, an insurance document? Uh, actually, here's a construction contract. It's a, a contract um, of, of hundreds of pages. Um, and what I'm doing is I'm feeding it into this website called chatpdf.com and I've loaded in the PDF and I, you know, I can now talk to the PDF. So tell me, tell me what this PDF is all about. And it's using the same large language model. Um, I'm sorry, I'm not quite sure what we're referring to. Um, let's try another question here. Uh, what are the liability issues referred to in this conduct? 
you know, hopefully I've got a good prompt there. The liability referred to in this contract includes any losses, damages, expensive, or costs that may be suffered by the city, yada, yada. Think about this. Suddenly we've got this, you know, several hundred page long PDF and we're using it, uh, a tool, an AI large language model tool to instantly do queries of it. Now, as I'm going to show you, there are hundreds, thousands of these little tools out there and go back to my key point that this is all about just-in-time knowledge. There's a lot of other fascinating stuff that is emerging that, that you know, is sort of related. And I'm going to go into something called um, PIM Eyes. This is a free search engine reverse image search. So what I'm going to do here um, is uh, I'm going to upload a picture of myself. Uh, and I think I've got one uh, here on my desktop. Uh, so here's a picture of me on the beach the other day. And I'm going to upload it into this thing called uh, PIM Eyes. And you're going to watch how quickly this is going to happen. It's going to go off. It's going to do a search based upon my face. It's now looking at the database. It's built of images from all over the internet. Uh, and in a matter of seconds, it said, you know, I mean, I've got a lot of pictures of me out there in the internet. I speak all over the world. But in a matter of seconds, it's gone off and it's found thousands of images where I exist on websites. Um, both good and bad. This is the type of thing being used by police forces. It can be used for nefarious purposes. Uh, you know, this is an acceler you know, example of the, the type of fascinating thing that going, is going on out there. Here's another really cool example of what's happening with large language models. This is um, something occurring at the Google Robotics Lab. And what they've got is they've got a robot with a, you know, arm that can grab things. Uh, and they literally have used a large language model, just as we might prompt ChatGBT. They've asked the large language model, uh, pick up the extinct animal. Now, this little robot has some machine vision built into it, uh, and it's got some large language model stuff behind it, uh, and it's figuring out the extinct robot is the dinosaur, and it's going uh, and, you know, picking it up. Here's another example of a tool. I mean, there are so many of these tools um, that are emerging out here. Let's, let's, let's make a logo. So, uh, I, I got to get on the right screen here. Let's make a logo. Um, and we want to make, uh, um, the logo name is construction company USA. We build good stuff. Uh, and we'll continue. And this is a text to image generator. And we'll say we're sort of, hey, we're sort of in the technology space and we want it to be a nice cold blue uh, type of color scheme that is a, you know, a little bit elegant, you know, like what we see with BBC and Google and uh, things like that. And we tell it generate. And what's happening here is again, these large language models are using a lot of, you know, sophisticated stuff in the background uh, to go off and do something pretty cool. And look at that. I mean, we've got a bunch of potential logos that we could uh, choose from. The, the thing is, there's so many of these tools out here. This is a paraphrasing tool where I can type something in and it's going to come back and summarize it into, you know, 50 words or less. There's also powerful business tools. So for example, on my own website, I'm using something called commandbar.ai. And what this does is it's indexed my website. I've got about 4,000 blog posts on my site. And over my website, I've got this little button up in the, up in the, that way, uh, up in the top uh, right. And if you open that up, what you're actually doing is you're talking uh, to an AI on my site. So I could ask it, you know, what are Jim Carroll's thoughts on disruptive innovation? This is an example of where AI could be used as a customer support tool. You might have, you know, a lot of documents that you're preparing. Look at that, it's summarizing here. You could have a lot of documents that you're making available to your customer. You're trying to streamline customer support. You're trying to reduce some costs. Uh, you know, we might see some things like this. There's a lot of uh, free tools. So Perplexity Labs, this is a site that you can use to write computer code. So I might say I need a PHP script that is going to take, this is a little bit geeky here, take the feed from an RTSP camera and capture an image every minute. And it's going to say, cool, uh, I can write that for you. You're gonna, here's, here's the code in something called Python. This is mind boggling stuff. Um, there's free image generator tools. So, you know, draw me an image, um, an elephant 
And by the way, we're going to have a handout um, after this, flying through the sky. Go and draw me a pretty picture of an elephant flying through the sky. We're going to have links to all these things so you can play around with them. Uh, what's happening here is a whole bunch of tech is, you know, happening in the background um, <laughs> to go on and, you know, generate a picture of an elephant flying through the sky. A lot of the images I'm using in my uh, presentation here uh, today are coming from this tool. So I've got a whole bunch of these. Uh, we'll share them with you. And it's absolutely fascinating what is happening. And this is, again, what I think, you know, what I call... This one's going a little slow here. What I call just-in-time knowledge. Uh, develop, this is about developing new skills. It's like what we did when we mastered the search engines. We learned to effectively use these tools to enhance what it is we could do. We're only a couple of minutes away um, from our next bit of the uh, Q&A. So how does one go about learning how to do all these types of things? I mean, all this stuff all seems a little bit overwhelming and intimidating. And I'm an AI. And if I am intimidated and overwhelmed, how does everyone else feel? Oh, if you're intimidated, we're in big trouble. I, I go back to my point. You won't lose your job to an AI. You could lose your job to someone using an AI. And how do you master this? You, you dive in. Uh, look, I, I, I found this site early on um, that was called AI Top Tools. And somebody was you know, summarizing uh, tools emerging on the internet that were based around AI. And they started out with a thousand tools and they had 2,000 tools and they had 3,000. They've given up. They, they just have more than 10,000 tools. Uh, and I mean, just go in here. The only way to learn this stuff is to dive in and start using it. It's not like you're going to break anything. It's like when you got your first computer or your first phone, press buttons, make it go, you know, play with it. I, I'm overwhelmed. I mean, I'm a futurist. I've been living and breathing this stuff for quite some time. There's so much of this going on. Uh, it is simply staggering. And again, we are going to give you a handout, um, you know, at the end of this that will be accessible on the we website for Enterprise University of some of the things I've shown you, places you can go uh, to get a sense of what is going on. Uh, let's, let's continue um, going on. And I want to talk, uh, actually, a good, good moment for some uh, Q&A because I know a bunch of questions uh, have come in. So let's, uh, let's dive into that and uh, uh, see what people are asking about. Yeah, Jim, some great questions coming in. So the first one, are you concerned about the reliability of language models like GBT? Uh, I have died in 1949, according to ChatGBT, uh, 1952. Uh, apparently, I died on September 15th, 2020. I find that kind of sad because they seem to be sitting here today. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, folks have observed it's full of misinformation. It's full of errors. We have to approach this with the same caution that we approach, you know, information we get from social media and that we get from... Uh, you know, web search engines. The, the challenge is this is taking us to a world where we can literally generate misinformation at scale. And we're already seeing the impact of this, uh, you know, in a whole bunch of ways where people are realizing that, you know, we can generate video of people saying things and people doing things. And the misinformation risk of this is very real, very profound. We can't make it go away. We simply have to figure out how to, how to work with it and what to do about it. Great. Here's a, a great tactical question. So if someone provided a PDF of a contract that their company is working on into an AI tool, like the example you gave earlier, is it no longer confidential and now available for anyone to use? Theoretically, yes. Uh, most major Fortune 1000, Fortune 5000 companies have put in restrictions on the use of chat GBT and other language models um, of private corporate information or from, you know, using within the workplace because theoretically it could become part of the language model and that confidential information could be leaked later on. One of the most interesting announcements that came out last week uh, is chat GBT announced um, enterprise GBT and essentially it's the software that would let a company create their own private um, chat GBT for use behind their firewall within their organization. Great. And then lastly, I think you answered this just a minute ago. How does a common person know where to find tools? And more importantly, what tools even exist? Dive in. I mean, <laughs> that's all I can suggest. I mean, but there's also courses. I mean, look, this is such a big industry. It's such a big thing. Uh, you know, everybody is, uh, you know, getting involved. Um, and so you've got to be thinking, um, I don't think I've got this uh, screen scaled right here because I, uh, 
uh, had it on a different monitor and I made it a little too big, so let's try it again. Um, you'll find that you know community course, uh, community colleges are gonna be running courses, you're gonna be finding people. Uh, actually, I'll have to do this one, not in uh, full screen. Uh, you'll just be finding a whole bunch of folks will be running programs uh, on this. So I think it's you know two things, diving in, working with the tools, go to the AI top tools site and some of the other things we've suggested for you and just work with this stuff. But also keep your eye out because there's gonna be a flood of education programs. Uh, so here's a question for you. The impact of AI on our industry will be massively transformative, somewhat disruptive, a little bit of an impact is way overhyped. Send a text to 37607 and in the body of the message, uh, punch in one of these numbers and you know we'll get a little bit of a sense uh, as to what you're thinking. Um, and I think I know how this vote is going to unfold. But I, I do a lot of these from the stage when I'm out in front of thousands of people. Most people with the first poll, you know, agree that, you know, AI is going to, they don't know a lot about AI and then in this poll, but yeah, we think it's going to have a big, big impact. And that much is true. Uh, and that's the conundrum. And that's where we need to, uh, you know, pick up the pace, uh, you know, in terms of what we can, uh, what we can learn about it. Uh, any more uh, questions or we'll just uh, continue along in the next bit? Yeah, just one quick, very tactical one. What would be the best way to use ChatGPT to create a job description? So one of the things I didn't know, uh, show, is there's actually places you can go out on the internet and you can buy um, prompts. Yeah, you, could, you could probably do a search for, you know, I, I need to find a prompt to help me write a good job description. And there's people out there, well, I, I will sell you the, the prompt. It's a really good prompt. Here's how well it works for five bucks. Uh, I bought for $5 at a place called Snack Prompt, uh, which I think I can pull up on the screen here. Uh, and I went there and I bought a, a prompt um, that let me design an entire... Um, I don't think I've got it queued up here, but it let me design an entire curriculum for an online course. So that's one way. But again, another way is just to dive in and, you know, work with the prompts and type, type, uh, type things in. It's, it's all about learning how to do it through experience. I want to dive in and talk about, um, you know, what we call the AI megatrends, because these are really, really important. I'm hoping everyone is enjoying our time together today. I know I am. And I'd like to congratulate the team at Enterprise Bank for 20 successful years with these Enterprise University events. Onwards. So let's talk about what you call the AI megatrends. What are they and why are they important to everyone attending here today? Yeah, I like to explain to everyone that every single industry is virtually going upside down. You think about the world of healthcare, the impact of AI is that it's helping to take us to this world in which we don't just fix you after you're sick, but we have a, a high degree of understanding of what you are likely to become sick with uh, based upon a lot of predeterministic analysis, uh, genomic medicine, preventative medicine, things like that. And so it takes the world of medicine, completely changes it. The same thing is happening in the world of insurance. We are moving a world in which we insure you based on, based on past behavior to understanding you know, what risks we're willing to insure when you are driving, for example, in real time with some GPS-based device in your car. And there's an AI algorithm which is you know, analyzing your driving behavior. Uh, in the world of farming, I like to explain, we're going to a world in which we're no longer farming just when the sun is up because of a lot of advanced autonomous technologies. We're farming 24 hours a day with self-driving tractor technology and the virtualization of the farm. Uh, in the world of manufacturing, we're going to this world in which we're no longer just mass producing every single item, but with a lot of advanced AI analytics and other technologies, we are mass producing individual products for specific people based on highly specific uh, specifications. In the world of construction, we're going into this world in which uh, we are utilizing things like 3D printing and 3D printing in concrete and advanced robotics and cobotics, changing the entire manufacturing process. The thing to recognize is the spending going into these AI megatrends, and that's what I call them, uh, is absolutely massive. In the world of healthcare, it said we're going from $10 billion to $177.4 billion by 2030. Little of this has to do with JotGBT and the things that you are seeing in the news. In the world of insurance, we're going from 2.3 billion to 68 billion. In the world of agriculture, 2.1 billion to 75 billion. In the world of energy, 4 billion to 19.8 billion. You see a pattern here, construction 2.1 billion to 23.1 billion. In the world of manufacturing, 6.2 billion to $178 billion. 
little of this stuff has to do with chat GBT and it has everything to do with what I call the AI megatrends. That involves some pretty big changes. Can you give us an overview of what this will involve in a variety of different industries? I mean, there's so much going on here. It's difficult to capture everything that is happening, but take the world of life sciences, healthcare, medicine, pharmaceuticals. Uh, medical image analysis. We can use AI to interpret x-rays with uh, you know, more accuracy than doctors or professional x-ray radiologists. Uh, personalized medicine, where we can use advanced AI insight to personalize a pharmaceutical plan for you because we know how it is going to react for your particular unique med medical circumstances. It's accelerating drug discovery. It's changing what we do with medical devices. If we connect a medical device with some AI technology, it's no longer a single standalone unintelligent medical device. It's a, it's a highly intelligent connected thing. Uh, and we can monitor those medical devices and do a lot of predictive analytics and emergency intervention to understand when things might be going wrong. The world of healthcare is changing at an accelerated pace because of AI. It's important to recognize a lot of this was already underway before ChatGPT and all these other technologies arrived in the last year. The same thing in insurance. Uh, look, you might get a GPS device in your car. We're no longer insuring you based upon your past driving behavior, but we are underwriting your insurance risk based upon real-time analysis. We call that predictive analytics. Uh, it's changing what we do with risk assess um, assessment and modeling. Uh, embedded real-time insurance is really what is happening here. Uh, we can use sophisticated AI algorithms for fraud detection and real-time risk predictive monitoring and product pricing and again, image analysis. In the world of agriculture, we move to this world, the 24-hour farming, the virtualization of farming. There's something we've had for a long time that we call precision agriculture, and that is the ability to get very detailed insight on what we are applying for a crop in terms of water, in terms of seed, in terms of moisture, in terms of fertilizer, in terms of the inputs. Uh, and understand better how we are managing our farm. Uh, think about what is happening with virtualization of the farm. AI is playing a role in that. The kid playing Farmville today, uh, they're actually learning how to work the 24-hour farm of tomorrow, automating the process of farming through these AI-connected uh, self-driving autonomous vehicles. Uh, my 29, 30-year-old son is a drone pilot and he can fly his drone over a crop and do a do a disease analysis based upon the thermal images that he is grabbing of the crop. I mean, AI is playing a profound role with these megatrends in the world of agriculture. In the world of energy, uh, we are transitioning to a world uh, with a lot of batteries, with a lot of wind, a lot of solar, and we call this microgrid, distributed energy technologies. My Tesla out in the driveway could become a part of the energy grid because we can store energy in that battery during the day and reuse it at night. Now, this involves a lot of sophisticated load bal balancing. We're re-architecting a new sort of energy grid. And AI is at the, at the heart of much of what we are doing there in the world of construction. I mean, we're seeing the arrival of construction robots where we are doing more assembly of a, of a construction process off-site using a lot of the very sophisticated uh, robotic assembly line like um, processes. We're doing that on a site as well. There's what we call BIM monitoring, building information management monitoring, where we're using AI for very sophisticated analysis of the project. Uh, job inspection, tremendous advances in terms of getting an update on the status of an entire construction pro process uh, using drone and other machine vision uh, capabilities to understand how well are we are doing. Uh, in terms of the overall project, the acceleration of manufacturing. I mean, think about what is happening. A lot of cobots, a lot of robots, uh, changing the entire manufacturing progress with a process with a lot of intelligent technologies. There's also what we call predictive maintenance, and that is uh, with what we call the industrial internet of things. We can use AI technologies to predict when particular parts, components, or parts of the process, manufacturing process, go down on an assembly line. And we all know that when a manufacturing assembly line goes down, it's a bad thing. We've got folks here today from the construction, rental and leasing industry, finance and insurance, manufacturing, wholesale and distribution. They probably want a few examples that are specific to their industries. What are some of the things you've seen? Oh, look, there's so much going on at Segre. I spoke at a construction event last week and uh, you know, we've already seen the emergence of road inspection technologies, specialized cameras which can examine for uh, potholes and cracks and structural problems and bridges using AI machine vision, which is one of the fastest moving aspects 
of AI, which again has nothing to do with ChatGBT. Uh, project management software. We're seeing a company come out called BillDots and they're coming up with you know automated tools and technologies to analyze uh, data from a construction site so we have better understanding of the overall status of our project. And look over in China, we're actually 3D printing an entire dam on site using concrete and a lot of advanced AI technologies. Uh, in the world of manufacturing, it's changing how we design. It's changing how we conceive products, uh, how we design them using digital twin technologies to plan out an entire manufacturing process in advance. In the world of uh, warehousing, manufacturing, supply chain retail. I mean, we know we've been in this world of critical supply chain shortages and the algorithm is providing us a very detailed insight into stockouts and what we need to better do to manage these complex supply chains. The world of insurance, a lot of very sophisticated dashboards emerging to analyze, understand uh, the entire process of what we are insuring. And as you've seen, uh, your car, once it has a GPS device in it, uh, can become a part of the insurance process. And that's what Tesla is doing with Tesla Insurance, where they are taking all the data collected from the vehicle while you drive around uh, and becoming an insurance company, thereby competing with existing insurance providers who have to deal with the reality of this massive disruption. These are the AI megatrends, which are causing massive sweeping disruptive change in virtually every single industry. Jim, you've covered a lot of ground here today. And the folks in attendance are probably feeling a little overwhelmed by it all. I know I certainly am. You seem to think that this is really an innovation issue and needs to be strategized with that framework in mind. Tell us about that. Yeah, and uh, just for the Enterprise Bank folks, I'm probably going, uh, you know, 5, 10, 15 minutes over. I, I think we're probably okay with that. Uh, and this is being uh, recorded and will be available later on. Yeah, for me, this is an innovation story. I mean, look, I've been, uh, you know, going around the world for... Uh, 30 years talking about innovation and to me innovation has all uh, always been about you know asking ourselves four key questions what can we do to run our business better with any new technology how can we use it to grow our business uh, how can we use it to help to transform our business and with AI um, how can we use it to invent a new business uh, that's really what it's all about and you've got to sort of put it in the context of those those pillars, thinking through, uh, you know, your leadership meetings, how can we utilize this fascinating technology uh, within those four ideas? Um, and people are, you know, realizing there are things we can do. If we look at some of the early surveys, where is it being used? Service operations, optimization, creation of new AI products, customer segmentation, a lot of uh, ability to analyze uh, sales histories and, you know, achieve some product upsell, but you've got to consider it um, in that strategic framework. The challenge is, is everybody's struggling, you know, how do we prove business value from an AI project? Uh, how do we get executive commitment to it? How do we make sure we um, are choosing the right technologies? These are all part of the big issue that everybody is going through. And I mean, there's some big, big plans. I mean, look, the global AI market is predicted to be over $136 billion dollars uh, growing at 13% over the next seven years. I mean, these are massive numbers. Uh, we're gonna, it's going to reach $300 billion, is expanding 38% per month. Uh, it's estimated by 2025, you know, there's going to be 37, 97 million people working in the AI space, 120% per year. And there's big expectations. 87% uh, of global organizations uh, believe that AI will give them a competitive edge. Um, nine in 10 plan to make AI uh, to use it for that purpose, four and five it to be, um, you know, a top priority. And I mean, it's expected to improve employee productivity by 40%. I mean, these are big expectations. Big plans, but not a lot of clarity. So help everyone here understand how they should be thinking about AI from a strategic perspective. Well, again, if we go into those innovation buckets, so, you know, how do we use it to run the business better? Um, Number one, helps, you know, the implementation of help and support bots. By the way, the, you know, look at the little image of a help support bot. So I went into one of these image generators and I said, draw me a picture of a, a, a chat bot. And this is what it came up with, really cute little guys. But, you know, the, the thing you saw on my website where I implemented a tool where you can talk to the 4,000 documents on my website. I mean, a very effective um, customer support tool. So there's a lot of tools out there today for workflow streamlining. Uh, you know, managing a payables process or managing a receivable process. As I mentioned, Enterprise Chat GBT, where you can put in your own private 
large language models. So there's tremendous opportunities in the insurance sector. Many organizations are already using them for fraud detection. Uh, getting into this question of how do I use it to grow my business? Well, how do I analyze customer sales and customer sales histories and uh, you know, use that to upsell on products? How can I enhance a product uh, through AI? Um, the whole issue of transforming the business, how can I embed AI into a product I sell. So for example, a medical device, if we add AI to it, it's not a widget anymore. It's an intelligence hyper-connected thing that does different things. So a lot of opportunities for what we call prognostic diagnostics. Volvo Mack trucks have built so much uh, technology and AI capability in the typical truck, they know when a darn thing's gonna break down. So if they're selling a fleet of a thousand trucks, they can tell you when it's gonna break down. That's worth money, that makes the truck more valuable. So it changes the nature of the product, you're transforming the business. And then there's the whole concept of disruption. You know, how do we, how do we challenge an existing industry through new, big, bold thinking? And here's what I always like to challenge folks with. We're now in a situation in which companies that do not yet exist will build products not yet conceived using materials not yet invented with methodologies not yet in existence. That's disruption. And that's what's going on out there. I mean, that's the reality of what is, what is occurring. Let's, let's dive in for a little bit more uh, Q&A and we'll probably wrap up in about uh, 10 minutes or so. Yeah, a, a great question about a specific industry that um, is going through disruption. Um, can you address the ramifications of AI in the film and TV industry? Oh boy, uh, you know what? I, I had this um, thing I wrote, I think back in 2015, uh, 25 trends for 2025. And, and one of the things I wrote is, you know, we're gonna see the emergence of, uh, you know, tools which will let, you know, for very fast, effective implementation of full video. So right now we can do, you know, what we call text to image generation. These tools, you know, draw me a picture of something and behind the scenes, it, it you know, goes away and comes up with fascinating artwork. There are already tools for text to video generation. So for example, my good friend, Brianna, uh, who's part of this presentation here today, uh, I've created her in, in an AI site uh, by simply typing in the text um, and you know, pressing go and it goes away and it generates that clip. I, I think the long-term implications for Hollywood are profound. I think that's why we're seeing the strike right now. Uh, the acceleration of tools for generation of video are moving along at an absolutely staggering, staggering pace. Uh, so, someone, someone asked before, by the way, about uh, you know, can we, uh, can we, um, how might we, uh, you know, develop a job description? So here I am, on this night site called Snack Prompt. Uh, and, um, you know, here's an example. You can, you, somebody said, well, please write a job description for the position of an associate G PHP developer with 200 words, words in the latest job format. So all I do is I copy that. I go into uh, chat GBT. Oh, well, that's my email there. We don't want to be there. Um, I'll go back into chat and I simply load that um, into my question box, paste it in and say, so, you know, please write a job description. Okay, here's your company name, location. Uh, and you can substitute into the question uh, your company name and it's gonna go away and write an entire job description. I mean, that's an example of what's coming about. And uh, you could do the same thing to, you know, work on your resume. I think the thing is, people are sort of discovering when something seems to be written by an AI. Uh, my daughter-in-law was, you know, working on applying for a new job and my son went and uh, wrote a, a cover letter using ChatGBT and you know they sent it to me and I said what do you think and I said it's written by an AI I mean you can tell it's cold it's sterile it doesn't have any emotion uh, embedded in it so you know I think there are risks to doing things like that I think most folks these days are using these tools to give them an outline a starting point and then going in and adding some edits to it to give it warmth and feeling I think we had another question come in Scott yeah, one, um, another question for you, Jim. So um, how do you think AI will be sequenced into the economy? For example, will it be introduced and used in less complex industries, moving its way up the ladder, or vice versa? It's already very prevalent in some industries. I mean, massive, probably the industries most impacted at this point in time are insurance, healthcare, pharmaceuticals. 
uh, scientific research R&D. Um, you know, very heavily used in the manufacturing sector, certainly in terms of robotics. The thing is, we are now on that Gartner hype cycle where we're, um, you know, beginning to realize the slope of, of productivity in some industries. And if you consider where I'm speaking in the next several months, I mean, it's the topic. I'm down in San Diego speaking at a construction conference and the role of AI in construction. I'm out in uh, Palm Springs a few days before for a company in the supply chain industry. I'm out in Hawaii with uh, actually the California uh, Western Growers Association talking about the use of AI in agriculture. Then I'm with a company in uh, Philly talking about AI and manufacturing. So I think what has happened is it's, it's been prevalent in some industries, but what has happened in the last year is certainly has caught the attention of everyone. And that means it's going to accelerate even faster. It's really hard to predict how quickly it is going to emerge. And it's, it's important to understand, again, between ChatGBT and these AI megatrends, a lot of opportunity with ChatGBT right now and those tools, which are evolving extremely quickly, the megatrends are bigger. And to a degree, they're evolving as quickly, but they involve much more complex projects and will take quite some you know, more time to evolve and have an impact. Got it. Um, another question for you. How can a company protect itself from having AI develop using their data and then having those developments sold to competitors? You know who's going to get rich off AI? Lawyers. Lawyers are going to make bags of money because there are going to be lawsuits flying left, right, and center. And we're already seeing that. I mean, there's been a variety of lawsuits uh, launched against uh, OpenAI.com, the company behind ChatGBT. Uh, this is taking us into unknown, unprecedented uh, issues of, of legal liability and copyright and trademark. I, look, I was an expert witness in a court case in 2002, and, and part of my uh, evidence was, you know, can we bring the internet uh, into the courtroom as an evidentiary tool? And now you imagine, can we bring an AI into the courtroom? I mean, I wrote an article on one of my speaker bureau sites. We're probably only a matter of years before some lawyer tries to bring an AI into the courtroom, and, you know, we're querying that AI uh, who's up in the docket. I mean, it, this is wild, wild uh, legal implications unfold in here. Okay, let's, uh, let's, let's dive in and uh, try and give you a little bit of guidance on you know, what you should be uh, doing next. That all makes a lot of sense and certainly gives us a way to get some strategic clarity around AI. Let me try this. People want to know what they should do with this new knowledge right away. Give them a list of 10 critical action steps or mindsets they should adopt to get moving forward with artificial intelligence. This is what I've been doing for 30 years. Look, I mean, I go into you know, big, massive stages in Las Vegas talking to 10,000 people about innovation and you know, action steps and what do we do to align to a faster future. I, look, here's the thing about AI. Uh, the, the quote I've been using is, the only thing we know about AI is we don't know where we're going, but we're making great time. I mean, to a degree, that's the reality of what is unfolding here. This is all moving so fast. We don't have a clear pattern of where it's going to take us. We just know there's a lot of big stuff uh, that is happening. What I try to stress to people is, look, there's no silver bullet. There's no magic answer. You got to dive in. You got to get involved. Um, you simply have to start working with this stuff. And here's here's a little fun thing. So I thought I would um, uh, use an image from one of these text to image generators uh, of a silver bullet. So I went into Stable Diffusion, which is one of those sites, and I said, draw me a picture of a silver bullet. Uh, look what it gave me. It gave me a silver bullet. I can only imagine somewhere in the large language model, there's a horse named Bullet. Uh, and it drew me a silver bullet. Um, kind of fascinating. Anyways, uh, you know, what do you, what do you do? I think number one, uh, what I advise a lot of my clients is you have to learn how to innovate in uncertainty. Uh, we don't know where we're going. We're making great time. So you have to go into this with that type of mindset. Um, you have to invest in what I call experiential capital. This is something I advise my Fortune 500 clients. Look, we, you know, in a world in which we are moving forward, it's so fast, but we don't know exactly where we're going. The only way to figure it out is to dive in. So think about financial capital. That's the depth of capital we have that we can invest in new projects. Experiential capital is the capital that we build up from experience, from trying new ideas, taking risks, exploring new things. The more experience you build up, the more experiential capital you have. Uh, and for that, I've seen a lot of companies build what I call an Xbox room. Look, I was in a company called Amstead Rail out in St. Louis, a 100 year old rail foundry. They make the undercarriage of rail cars. Uh, big metal foundry pouring molten metal and then they took me into this room where they had three young engineers 
uh, with a whole bunch of gear, a whole bunch of computers. And you know, their mindset was, we don't know what 3D printing is all about. We understand it's going to have a big impact. We don't understand virtual reality, but we know it's going to be big. So we've hired these three young kids to figure it out for us. We call it the Xbox room, build an Xbox room, have an innovation runway. My son, who is the 30 year, 30 year old drone pilot, he's getting a lot of pushback from the older engineers in the organization and you have to battle that sort of organizational sclerosis, um, you know, it slows us down. Be prepared to waste time on frivolous things. If your organization isn't prepared to take risks and isn't prepared to waste time exploring these new worlds, you're not going to figure it out. Um, discover new pain points. Talk to your customers. How can we help you? Uh, where are there challenges that we can fix for you? And then you discover AI tools that might help you with that, such as the you know, the chat bot that you saw on my site before. Assess your skill set. You're going to need AI skills in your organization. The challenge is there's very few skills out there. And so if you are a large organization, you better start thinking about locking down uh, those skills right now. There's what I call guard against the ugly, and that is deal, you know, establish it, that security and privacy framework. Your employees should not be using chat GBT with confidential corporate information. They should not be uploading um, personal PDFs, company PDFs to sites like chatpdf.com because it could become a part of the algorithm. So have a security and privacy framework. Uh, and that's, in, you know, it, developing what I call AI governance principles. These are the principles that will guide our use of AI. And the last thing, keep your eye on the edges. So much of this is occurring in what we call the open source community where people are developing and implementing and putting in place AI stuff in public and you know I just got a new Mac yesterday uh, so that I can begin to implement a lot of these AI tools in my home. Uh, fortunately I didn't try to bring it into the studio and use it here uh, today because it would have stressed out the folks at Enterprise Bank but I mean you know you got to work with this stuff. Uh, explore it, uh, understand what it means. Uh, you know there's, there's this quote that uh, you know I always like from Jeff Bezos at Amazon. I'm about two minutes to wrap up. Make more mistakes. And, you know, he observed ones, uh, you know, with, with one of their uh, phones that failed, uh, the, the Fire Phone. Uh, you know, if you think that's a big failure, you got to understand we're making much bigger failures right now. Um, some of them are going to make this failure look like a, a little blip. It's our job to make failures. If we want to be innovative and pioneering, we've got to make mistakes. That's the only way to get ahead. Dive in, get involved with this, start working with it. Jim, I understand that we are getting close to the end of our session today. So just two more things. First, we might have a little more time for additional Q&A, and I hope that is okay. Second, and this is kind of difficult for me to bring up, we seem to be working together quite a bit, and you still have not clarified what type of salary I will be getting for my work as an AI. What are we going to do about that? Uh, I think we're going to have to talk offline about that, Brianna. We'll figure that out. I mean, this is new and unprecedented territory. I never realized I might have to pay an AI. Uh, you know, for the work that they're doing uh, with me here. So uh, we've got a couple of minutes uh, for, for questions. Uh, I hope everybody has enjoyed our session. And look, this is an incredibly complex topic. We're trying to cover a tremendous amount of ground. Uh, hopefully I've, you know, begun to provide a little bit of clarity into uh, what's going on out there. So Jim, question for you. What skills and or characteristics does a personal knowledge butler possess? I, I, I think I've got that capability. I mean, when I got on the internet, you know, way back in the late 80s, I realized one of the most power, powerful things I could do was to develop that capability of just-in-time knowledge. And so I've taught myself to be a very effective at research. So, for example, if I'm going into the construction industry, I use a very powerful tool called Dow Jones Factiva. I, and I will go off and pull out, you know, the last 1,000 articles on AI and construction that come from news magazines, industry publications, um, research publications and more. Uh, but I also run a bunch of news alerts. So every day my uh, system feeds me alerts of new news, tracking drone technology, tracking AI, tracking construction. Uh, so I'm feeding myself regular information on, on a regular basis. And we're seeing those types of tools. Um, you know, if we go to this AI top tools site, uh, which we're going to share, and there's another site I'm sharing, you're going to discover just a wealth of tools um, from virtually every possible aspect that somehow are using AI in the background uh, that you might discover specific industry tools that can be very, very useful and powerful to you. But it goes back to that key concept of 
you're developing the skills to get the right knowledge at the right time for the right purpose, just in time knowledge. Um, what is the most surprising place where you've seen AI have an impact? I think probably in the healthcare sector. Uh, I shouldn't be surprised because I've been predicting it for years. But for example, in an emergency hospital room, uh, we are in some hospitals uh, getting very effective at monitoring patients for the sudden acceleration of sepsis. And sepsis is one of the most dangerous conditions in an ER because it can lead to rapid and early death. Uh, and an AI is proving to be extremely effective in predicting that. Uh, it's, it's an AI is extremely um, powerful in predicting uh, other critical care emergency situations. In the ophthalmologic field, uh, an AI is far more effective at, at um, assessing predicting eye disease for um, 50 different types of eye disease than a professional uh, in, you know, individual medical doctor, optometrist. Uh, so I think in the medical field, it's emerging at a staggering speed and people aren't really aware of how quickly it's happening. Got it. Do you have any thoughts on the future of AI in countries that, um, you know, have heavy regulations versus countries that have low or no regulation? You know what, this is, to me, a lot of what is happening with uh, AI right now, it's, it's, it's like the internet in 1993. So in 1993, I'd already been online for 10 years. I was on predecessor technologies of the internet for quite some time. You know, and the internet suddenly exploded on the scene. And I wrote 34 books about the internet and sold a million books. And I was on the news all the time. And I was always getting the question, you know, what are we going to do to regulate the internet? And you know, my answer was, well, what are we going to do to regulate water? We can't. I mean, what are we going to do to regulate rain? We can't. Uh, the cat is out of the bag. Uh, this is just like the emergence of the internet. There's little we can do to prevent its use. I think we need to realize this is taking us into new and unprecedented, complex, powerful, and yet dangerous territory. Uh, and so, you know, there might be efforts to restrict it, regulate it. Not going to have much impact. It's just like the early days of the internet. The best we can do uh, is to learn how to manage it and educate our, ourselves, you know, as to the promise and peril of what it represents. Okay, those are all the questions for now. I think that uh, I think that might be it. So, look, I want to thank the team at uh, Enterprise University uh, for for um, for bringing me in. Uh, you know, absolutely fantastic event. And when they first approached me about this. Uh, you, know, you know, to realize you've been doing this for 20 years. I mean, I know we all went virtual, uh, you know, during the earliest days of COVID. And, you know, this is what I did, you know, in, in building this big, sophisticated virtual broadcast studio uh, in my home. And, you know, seeing that you've um, been doing this for quite some time was tremendously exciting. Uh, and, you know, I want to give a shout out to Gabriella Castales, uh, who's, you know, one of the key organizers behind this. She's done an absolutely fabulous job. Uh, and Daniel, uh, you know, the tech work, he and I got in a couple of calls and, you know, shared, we geeked out, uh, you know, comparing what we had in terms of gear and equipment and stuff like that. Uh, you know, I want to thank you for, uh, for bringing me in. It's been a, you know, fabulous, fabulous event. Hopefully we've shared some good insight and uh, accelerated everyone's understanding of this new and complex world. Thank you. No, well, thank you, Jim, for presenting and thank you everyone for attending today. I think the thing that really resonated with me today is your encouragement to dive in. Um, and I think uh, that's what we all need to do because um, uh, this trend is continuing. Um, just as a quick reminder, Enterprise University classes continue through November 16th. And if you'd like to learn what classes we have out there and register, um, please visit enterprisebank.com slash EU see the course schedule and to register. And thank you again for attending everyone.